WWDC is just a few days away, and so in this video, we're gonna go over what you can expect to see announced at Apple's upcoming event. So iOS and iPadOS 18, that's gonna be probably the big star of the show, and it's expected to be a pretty major update with a heavy emphasis on AI. Apple is expected to use large language models, or LLMs, to train Siri, which will theoretically result in major improvements to the personal assistant. LLMs are the backbone of popular AI offerings like OpenAI's ChatGPT. Rumors suggest that Siri will have a more casual, conversational feel with a much more natural voice. Siri should be able to do more than ever before, taking into account people, companies, calendar events, locations, and dates. Apple plans to give Siri control over individual features in apps, so Siri will be able to perform specific functions in applications that are not possible today. Siri will, for example, be able to open specific documents, move files from one folder to another, delete an email, summarize messages, notifications, and articles. Apple has also inked a deal with OpenAI to integrate ChatGPT technology into iOS 18, and because Apple does not plan to build its own chatbot at this time, that's why they're gonna be using ChatGPT. ChatGPT will also be an opt-in feature for iOS 18 and iPadOS 18 users. So if you don't wanna use it, you don't have to. We can also expect to see Apple bring many new AI features to its own built-in applications. And you can check out the full list in the article linked down below. But some of the ones that get me excited are Safari and its new intelligent search option that will use AI to identify key topics and phrases on a web page, offering a quick summary. Apple will also refresh the quick access menu, add some features currently in the share sheet, and there will be a web eraser tool that lets users hide unwanted portions of web pages that persist across visits. In the Photos app, there will be a new AI-based feature for removing unwanted objects from images. Shortcuts will better integrate with Siri, allowing for the automation of complex tasks with less effort. And the Mail app will be able to suggest replies to incoming mails through a Smart Replies feature. Plus, it will have improved search and an option for summarizing long email threads. And Apple will finally be bringing a calculator app to the iPad. I know, huge news. And I'm being semi-sarcastic. It actually is kind of big news because there hasn't been one since the inception of the iPad. And so now there will finally be a calculator on that tablet. We're also expecting a ton of changes to the home screen, like the ability to arrange app icons in new ways and potentially change the color of every app icon if you want to. Apple has also tested out a customizable control center layout for iOS 18, and if adopted, it will feature a drag and drop interface that lets some of the controls be reorganized. Apple's also planning to add a new Apple Music widget and improved controls for HomeKit products. The passwords portion of the settings app will now be a standalone application that essentially offers all of the functionality that's currently available in the passwords section of settings, such as generating one-time passcodes and just generating passwords in general. The app will include logins and passwords for websites, Wi-Fi network passwords, and passkeys, which is a feature that uses Face ID or Touch ID to log into websites instead of a password. The best part about this app is that Apple actually plans to allow customers to import passwords from third-party apps, so that if you wanna make the full switch, you can do so, and there will be a way to access these passwords on Vision Pro and on PCs, and honestly, hopefully Android as well, for those of you who might have two different devices, or if you have Android tablet and an iPhone, whatever the case may be, having it be basically like all the other third-party apps would be tremendous. Now, we should expect to hear more about RCS integration within the Messages app at WWDC, which will improve communications with Android users. RCS supports higher resolution photos and videos, larger file sizes and file sharing, audio messages, cross-platform emoji reactions, real-time typing indicators, improved group chats, and read receipts. All of these features will be available in iPhone to Android text message threads when this feature launches. Lastly, in iOS 18, Apple also plans to add smarter recaps that will summarize the notifications that you've missed while in a focus mode. The feature will make it easier to catch up with and skip over notifications that are not useful to you. There's plenty more to go over, honestly, but in the essence of keeping this video kind of short, please check out the article linked in the description down below. That'll have all the details of everything that we're expecting to hear at the event. Now, when it comes to macOS specifically, much like iPadOS and iOS, all kind of sharing the same features, we're expecting a lot of these AI features and feature parity to be kind of spread across Apple's devices. It's what the company has done in the past. 
Uh, so the new additions in apps like Messages, Mail, Photos, Apple Music, etc., all of that should be introduced to the Mac and Siri features will be in Mac OS 15 eventually. We've heard a very limited amount about Mac specific features, but the calculator is expected to get a redesign kind of inspired by the iPhone calculator app with rounded buttons and an enhanced unit conversion system. And system settings will be reorganized in a way that puts the most used features at the top of the app. Apple usually names macOS after a California landmark, so drop your guesses in the comments down below. I think my guess kind of goes towards macOS Sequoia or macOS Mammoth. WatchOS and tvOS, those don't usually get a ton of stage time. I mean, WatchOS does, but tvOS really doesn't get a lot of stage time. Uh, but we should expect Siri improvements to trickle on down from those other platforms to watchOS and tvOS, specifically with the Apple Watch. We've heard rumors about uh, the Apple Watch getting a version of Siri that is optimized for on-the-go tasks, resulting in a personal assistant that is able to do more from your wrist, which sounds delightful. And last but not least, Apple Vision Pro, Vision OS. We should see Vision OS 2, and we should see that platform introduce dedicated Vision Pro versions of Apple apps that did not make it in the first version of the software. So Home, Apple News, Reminders, Voice Memos, and Calendars. And Bloomberg's Mark Gurman has said that Apple will also add other missing features, but didn't really provide us with specific details. WWDC 2024 begins this Monday, June 10th, with the keynote kicking things off at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. The keynote will be available on YouTube, on Apple's website, in the Apple TV app, and in the Apple developer app. Of course, Mac Rumors will have coverage with the live blog and through the Mac Rumors live Twitter account if you are unable to watch it. And I'll have an event recap at some point after the event, and I'll go hands-on with the betas throughout the week. I'll be at the event, so might be a little later than normal, but be sure to subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss those videos. And of course, I'd love to hear from you about everything that we just talked about in the comments down below. What are you hoping will be announced? What are you excited for? Let me know down in those comments. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you around in the next video.